1050 AM and Express 106.5 FM. PCAA 1050 AM 102.3 FM 106.5 FM all over Southern California. We are also on your favorite podcast platform or you can catch us on streaming on Roku, Fire TV or Android on the Building Solid Foundations channel coming soon to the Apple platforms. Uh, today we are talking with two very special guests in the studio. Uh, the first is Dr. Jennifer Gerges. She holds degrees in psychology from UC Irvine, um, from Chapman University, which actually I am an alum of Chapman <laughs> University as well, with the Argia School up there, <laughs> and from Walden University, and she holds license as a marriage and family therapist. Um, we'll get more into what else she does too, but uh, sitting next to her, uh, we've had him on the show previously talking about traumatic brain injury and CTE among football players and other athletes is NFL great Wes Chandler. Uh, Wes Chandler is founder and president of WCTE, which was launched in 2019, and they are focused on all things related to traumatic brain injury and CTE in um, diagnosis, prevention, and um, identifying what the issues are. So welcome both of you. I know you work together. Mm -hmm. uh, you are partnered in helping people with these brain issues. Now, uh, Dr. Jennifer, um, your emphasis is in behavioral health, is that right? That's correct. Okay, and, and that is one aspect when we, we talked with Wes in a previous show, we mentioned that behavioral was one piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. So um, fill us in on how that fits in to this I issue of uh, traumatic brain injury and CTE. So a traumatic brain injury, it's going to go hand in hand with any kind of mental health issue, especially depression, um, PTSD, uh, aside from the physical ailment of the physical uh, component of trauma, there's the mental health component of trauma. Um, so in my years of treating patients with traumatic brain injuries, we try to you know, also kind of combine the, the services as best as we can and trying to obviously understand and go to like the root of where this all first started. Because uh, it is a trauma when you first realize that you're going through such a, a change and adjustment in, in your life. Um, the things that you used to do, you can't do anymore. Okay, um, I remember, uh, Wes, you telling us last time you were not able to sign your name. Just sign my name. Mm -hmm. so yeah, just the brain state. and the hand just weren't talking to each other anymore. Correct. Right. Yeah, and it, it can be very scary, right? It, it's just a very terrifying moment when you're not, you know, yourself, the identity of who you were so proud of, you know, being this one individual, whatever your background may have been. Uh, whatever the, the root of the cause, if, if it is uh, because of being a professional you know, NFL player or it is um, being an ex-veteran from the war and having traumatic brain injury because of that or, or an injury from a car accident. You know, there's going to be different um, causes, but the result's the same, sadly, with the physical ailment, the mental health. And we're going to target the mental health component, the behavioral health on our end. Uh, and a lot of it with treating individuals that come to us, um, you know, currently there's a lot of other modalities outside of CBT, which is co cognitive behavioral therapy, which is what I pretty much would say I'm a, a pro because <laughs> that's what I would be doing for years. Okay. I would always be treating a lot of my patients with um, CBT. Uh, and it's been known to be very effective. But in combination with a lot of other treatments that are out there like PRTMS, uh, I think that can be very, very helpful because it's also non-invasive, right? There's the non-medication uh, component, which I think it, a lot of people are for that. If mm -hmm. I don't, if I don't have to take a pill, you know, I think yeah. it makes them very happy not to go that route. If they don't have to, always have to take the pill. Yeah, if they yeah. don't have to, right? Because yeah. I know there are going to be some cases that you may need to, right? You, mm -hmm. I'm not here to say I'm against pharmaceuticals or medication mm -hmm. because I do see in the years of some of my patients that do benefit from that as well. You know, they may have to see a psychiatrist mm -hmm. uh, or a psychiatric nurse practitioner in order to get the right medication in combination with the talk therapy, uh, with all the other resources that are mm -hmm. out there. I think it's not just a standalone um, because we work together as a team. And I think the more we work and collaborate, the better results we're gonna get in helping individuals that come asking for that help. Okay, and, and Wes, um, 
Uh, what led you to form the partnership with Dr. Jennifer with WCTE? Where, how does that fit Be into the Because again, picture? I realized that even as a professional athlete, and I just, I, we, we isolate the professional athlete, but I know that there is more than just the brain that, that they're suffering from. And even with the brain uh, injury, they have the, 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 uh, the body injuries, they have the chronic pain. But again, when we look at professional players, they suffer from a mental perspective and a behavior perspective. It, you can play the game, you can have bad days, and it'll put you in a bad behavior. Right. You can go off and, and rant, right? But a lot of times that comes because you're doing all this head pain and you're playing this gladiator sport, as we mentioned in our earlier segment, that it does something to you differently. Your testosterone is at a different level when you're playing a gladiator sport such as football. Right. Now, dude, and there's, there's the mental aspect. You're going home. I used to like to say that I, I don't want to live next to the facility where I practice. Right. I want to leave that behind me. I want to be as far away as I can. Compartmentalize. So yeah. I can comp Yeah. So I want to change. I want to be able to be, I want to be dad. I want to be the husband, whomever, when I get in the house. I don't want to be this gladiator walking into the house and carry that same attitude that right. I had on the football field, on the gridiron all day into my household. So uh, trash talking your kids doesn't work very effectively, does it? Or the, or the lady or the, the lady house. of the house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pushing her around, that's not a good thing. I was going to say something. <laughs> uh, but, but knowing that these individuals um, really need, because they, they go through uh, trying times in their lives, um, be it the fact that they've just retired uh, and they're having issues uh, at home, family matters, they need someone to talk to. It's, it's a real adjustment when you're no longer, you are a has been or was, mm -hmm. right, and you're no longer a current. That's a mental challenge for you all together. I remember the day I retired, I walked away from the game. I got up the very next morning, I jumped in my car, and I was five miles down the road towards uh, Great American Park where, where the 49ers were practicing. And before I realized, I don't have to do this no more. I got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then it took me a long time to adjust that I wasn't this guy anymore. And I was just a regular, everyday person in society trying to do And better. as time goes on, that gets more and more pronounced. Because yes. the day you leave, people still know you are because they saw you play, they saw mm -hmm. you on TV. Yes. And, and then five years later, um, people forget. And 10 years later, it's an entirely different fan base. That's correct. They never saw you play. That's correct. Yeah. But it takes time for you to get away from having this activity uh, on a daily basis, seven to... Uh, eight months out of the year, and now you're you're, you're doing nothing. You've right. played mm -hmm. ten, twelve years, which is a long time in a career, that yes. career, mm -hmm. but a short time in a lifespan. Now you find yourself your your friends are at work. You're home. Mm -hmm. What do you do with yourself? Right. You're bored. Yeah. You know the wife's telling you get out the house, and go and do you, something. And you're not getting all the invites you used to when you used to be known. And by you're everybody. not getting That's right. all of that. Right. And and um, I. Not related to the football or this, I, I've, I've talked with people in the past, I've done a lot of business consulting and I teach in college, but I, it's a management program. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, uh, retirement is not what humans are designed to do. Mm -hmm. that, that's a fallacy. That we talk so, about retirement as a goal. Yeah. The human being is not designed to no. sit down and retire. Mm -hmm. The human being is designed to have uh, mental challenges and physical challenges and things we have to do every day, problems to solve, mm -hmm. um, objectives, purposes, that's, goals. That's we are designed to do that. We are not designed to have the easy life of sitting in a chair and watching movies. That's our life. motivation and, to get through life. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why uh, people that buy into that myth um, tend to have very short retirements before they die. Mm -hmm. they, they, they work their whole life for retirement and then in, uh, seven, eight years later they're gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they never, because they sat down and just stopped. The brain stopped, the body stopped. So I understand what you're saying. I mean, that happens at a young age, which coming out of the pro sports, retirement happens early and a lot of times unplanned because you were cut mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden there you are and you better figure out something else to do. And one of the biggest, one of the other biggest reasons why this was so important is because when some family members including spouse, girlfriend, whomever, realize that this person is suffering from one of those epidemics, 
stemming from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, guess what? They can't deal with it. It's not an easy thing to deal with, which right. I understand. They didn't sign up for that part. They of didn't it. sign up for that part. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to girlfriends and wives that have left the house that's mm -hmm. sitting in a hotel room yeah. because they can't deal with it. Yeah, they, they, they married a rock star. They didn't marry someone who needed a lot of help. Who needed a lot of help. That's and right. so I'm not certified to do that. Our company's not certified to do that. But I realized that it was an important piece that was necessary to help these people with quality of life. So that partnership became more and more inevitable that it was necessary. Right. And, and you know, it, you tie to that that... Um, and not just for the players, Steve. Right. For, for the other individuals, for the, for the spouse to learn mm -hmm. how to deal and how to treat for right. the girlfriend, yeah. for the family members. And I, and I know that uh, there's obviously females that will deal with this if they're soccer players and there's other, other you know, accident victims, whatever. But the predominantly it's male in the sports that are the most violent sports. Yeah. And what's also unique is, is men, we tend to identify ourselves by what we do. And if we don't have what we do, every day to say, mm -hmm. I am this, mm -hmm. this is who I am, uh, that will mess with us in our head too and make us feel worthless, yeah. which then can exacerbate behavioral issues as well because we got to take that out on somebody, which yeah. we shouldn't. All that, the that's anger issues. That anger, are, yeah. because we feel, we're feeling useless yeah. and, and we don't want to feel yeah. useless. We're going to have to take a short break. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation. Our guest today is, um, we have Wes Chandler from a former NFL and president and founder of WCTE and Dr. Jennifer Gurgis, who is um, behavioral psychology, right? Yeah, therapist. Yeah. Thera mm -hmm. Behavioral therapist. We'll be right back after this on Building Solid Foundations Radio. I'm your host, Steve Mann. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services, including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing, video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e commerce solution, content writing, and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Real Men of Real Estate. Men of Real Estate radio show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically go to the radio station kcaaradio.com. You can find us on your dial at 102.3 FM, 10.50 AM, as well as 106.5 FM. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate business and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951-551-1350 and ask for Ken. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951-551-1350 and ask for Ken.
Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations Radio. Today we are talking with Dr. Um, Dr. Jennifer Gerges, a behavioral therapist. We're also talking to Wes Chandler, uh, founder and president of WCTE and former NFL player. And we've been talking about uh, behavioral issues that come out of uh, athletes or other people that are dealing with uh, traumatic brain injury, uh, CTE, or other, um, other issues that are long-term, lifetime mental conditions, um, generally coming from physical trauma of some type. Obviously, this is something that is more prominent among people who spend their career being banged around um, as boxers, Mm -hmm. football players, soccer players, hockey Um, players, um, whatever they're doing, lacrosse, roller derby, whatever they're into. you know, knocking heads around. So that that is something that is, is going to cause lifetime problems. Uh, now, Jennifer, you have a few uh, publications you put out. You have um, a doctoral study you've done, mm-hmm. and you also did um, a co-author of uh, I believe an article is that right? Is that a yeah? It's a it's a doctoral okay, um, okay. publication, refractive research, research, research mm-hmm. study type exactly. stuff. Exactly. Right? So we uh, wrote one of the chapters on women leadership. Um, and then my study was specifically tying organizational change with mental health, which okay. is very applicable to now running a mental health <laughs> agency. Right. So, okay. Mm-hmm. And and so you are obviously an expert in the field. That's why we're here, <laughs> and and why you're working with with Wes and his company. Mm-hmm. Um, now you your license is marriage and family. So the connection I'm going to make is that the behavioral problems are affecting the relationships. Is that right. correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so part of what you're doing is coming in and not just trying to fix a relationship by saying, be nice to each other. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, let's get to the roots. Is mm-hmm. there something that's preventing a person who wants to have better behavior that can't have the better behavior? Cause mm-hmm. there's something physically wrong yeah, there. Is that exactly. right? Exactly. We're trying to help to exactly to get to the root of the problem. It's what is the, kind of like the root of these behavioral changes as Wes was talking about. Because as we were saying earlier, we were talking about anger management issues. So if you're having outbursts at home um, with your loved ones, you know, your spouse, your children, obviously that's not healthy, you know, to say the least. And, And it's a cry for help. Something's not right. Something needs to be, you know, quote unquote fix. I hate to use that word, but you, you need the help. You need to go and talk to a professional. Uh, and I think us as professionals in this field can try to make those connections that by yourself, you're not able to make um, as your spouse maybe is just struggling because they are confused themselves. They don't understand why these changes are taking place. So just having these um, family sessions, uh, marital you know, therapy can be very helpful. Couples therapy can be a, a, a big, big help, uh, specifically with these specific issues that we're talking about. Aside from the individual therapy, that will be very helpful. And anything else that may be needed, if it is medication, if it is pure TMS, you know, whatever it is that we can offer, uh, it's going to be really, really helpful. And I know Wes um, was talking about the partnership, and the partnership with us is with Serene Health, because Serene Health, um, as we got established, we have so many therapists now, you know, providing telehealth services. So we have about 80 therapists available, which definitely closes the gap to the access issues, right? Because that's the problem right now. It's like a worldwide issue about where can I go get help? I don't know. How hard is it to get a therapy appointment? It is because the demand is so high and there's not enough therapists. And you don't know where to go because there's, Mm -hmm. there's a, you can look through listings and there's a thousand different psychologists, Mm -hmm. psychiatrists, therapists, Mm -hmm. and they're dealing with different different things for different people and they're mm-hmm. trained to do different things mm-hmm. so knowing where to go can be very confusing it is people. very confusing for someone that has never even you know seeked out most help. of us don't yep. think mm-hmm. about it we don't want to think about it yeah. and then when we do need it we don't have enough information to know where to start yeah because maybe it's the first time you've had that conversation possibly right for a lot yeah. of people coming to us it could be yeah. Yeah. very terrifying to make even just pick up the phone to make that initial uh, consult you know to make that Initial visit takes a lot, a lot of courage and a, a lot of support from their family and loved ones. Yeah, and when we talked, um, when Wes was on our show last time, we talked about the uh, stigma mm-hmm. that comes with this, where, um, well, for anybody, we don't want to have the conversation of, I, I think I'm losing my marbles. I don't know what to do about it. That That's 
we, nobody wants to face that, no. right? And you're not necessarily going insane. It just no. there's a there's a physical issue that needs to be addressed mm -hmm. that's affecting yeah. your thinking and behaving. Yeah. And then when you factor then men into it, that uh, you know, again, my experience being one is that we tend to have uh, we're stubborn. We have a little mm -hmm. ego. Mancho. Yeah, we don't we don't <laughs> like to admit that we need help, right? We if we're not going to ask for directions when we're lost, why would we ask for help when we think our brains are going wrong, exactly. right? And and, and because there's that, we don't want to be perceived as weak. Mm -hmm. And and in the case of the professional athletes, high performing professional mm -hmm. athletes, you're talking an alpha male type, anyways, yeah. right? So you're talking a high mm -hmm. performing a monster. Mm -hmm. That's right. And and the trick there is the self control that goes with it. Mm -hmm. And what they're losing is when the brain is injured, is they're losing the self control self -control. piece of it. So now they're just the monster without the self control. Yeah. 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 And and that's where the problems come in. Oh, and yeah. so and that's where they need help. And likely they are the very people that aren't going to sit down and talk to people and no. say, I need a lot of help. Mm -hmm. They're not. Um, and you use the word what? Goliath? <laughs> or gladiator? Yeah. What gladiators, did you gladiators? Yeah. Gladiators? That's right. Yeah. You know, so they do have that mentality and their that high level of testosterone and that kicks in. And, you know, and then you have the, you know, the physical trauma, the emotional trauma that's all connected. And, you know, here we are trying to help you know, these individuals in need. But exactly what you were saying, it's just knowing even where to go get the help. Yeah. Um, it can be very terrifying. And, and, and for the spouse or the girlfriends, in, in their defense, there's this guy that has turned into really a jerk, mm -hmm. right? And they don't understand. Yeah, they, they don't understand they don't why. Know. They're not They're not trained in psychology. No. Nobody's yeah. talked to them about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, their, their guy has always been idolized. Yeah. By That's everybody. right. He's, and, and all of a sudden, you know, there's, you know what, how did he morph into this, this just complete, like a complete jerk, you mm -hmm. know, how did this happen? And and so they're they're not equipped to deal with it yeah. either. And so in relationships, that means that when you're hurt, you lash back. That mm -hmm. exacerbates the problem. Yeah, and then it's worse. Now they end up with marriage and family therapy because yeah. and and they don't really know why how they how they got to where they are, why they're where they yeah. are. Which is true. And because that that guy is still sitting there with an issue, and you have not dissect why he's having those problems. Right. So it continues to get worse. And now she's, not getting she's dealing with emotional trauma mm -hmm. because yes. he's abusive. And he's getting worse. Yeah, yeah. at least verbally, if not mm -hmm. physically, but That's at right. least verbully. And that, that takes a toll on someone's mental health, too. Definitely, yeah. So then you're trying to treat the whole family, not right. just the individual you know, that has the trauma. But now there's and different type of trauma because now you're dealing with the adjustment of your spouse not being the same person right. that you married. <laughs> Yeah, and, and they really aren't because they're, mm -hmm. the cognitively mm -hmm. there's things blocking mm -hmm. their, their thought for the synapses aren't working right. Yeah, because that's yeah. kind of like the most common thing. I'm like, that's not the person I married. You know, that's what they say to us all but the that's time. That's the person <laughs> you married after getting knocked around 1,500 times. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and, exactly. And it's really sad because, you know, we, we are molded that way. I can remember the first time I stepped on a professional football field versus college. Said, um, the coach said, is that the best she can do? Right, right. And my thought was, and I know what he meant. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I better go a little bit, put a little bit more into this, right? So you're taught not to be weak. That's right. But to be strong, aggressive. You don't complain. Mm -hmm. You don't complain. Admit there's pain ever. None. You don't show a sign of weakness. That's right. And so you go through life that way, and it just becomes a natural part of yeah. what you do. Your program. Well, and, and everybody yeah. around you, the whole culture, puts you on the pedestal on the, and yes. treats you as your your like a Greek god or like something. A Greek, yes. And and that you are therefore um, not subject to the laws of chemistry and physics that every other human is. <laughs> That's true. Right. Yeah, they don't mm -hmm. apply to them. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 And, and and that and that creates, you know, when you have that life, that all that together creates this toxic cocktail in the brain that's a problem, and then you add to physical injury to it. Mm -hmm. And and then, as we mentioned, uh, maybe being cut from a team or having <sighs> to retire out, mm -hmm. and there go all your invitations to the Hollywood parties and all your free restaurants yes. and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and all that combined can, can create a real um, 
a real psychological mess mm -hmm. for a person. It becomes a real, uh, yeah, and, and that part too can, can force someone to be a real jerk. You can't get in the club like you used to. You used to get a hall pass, now you can't. Yeah, you so, so and I should, you mentioned the word has been or, or were, and, and that's, nobody wants to be that. Nobody, nobody wants to think yeah. your best days were behind you. That's that right. um, from here on out, it's all downhill. I peaked, mm -hmm. and I peaked at a fairly young age, and now I've got theoretically decades to live, and I don't know why I'd want to do that's that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and, and and it's and it's really sad. And and more and more, I talk to to former players and and try and get them to help carry and share the message. Um, it's more about awareness and the education part right. of it. Because if we don't continue to educate them about the issues and how to uh, step up and get the treatment, you know, it's. It's, it's a problem in our society because guess what? Newspapers and magazines in our society are primarily sold and marketed because that person on the cover has an impact on right. our society, right. right? But what happens if it's a monster? Hmm. Well, and sensationalism, we, want, we love reading bad news. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. true. You know, and, and to some degree, as much as we like our heroes, we, we kind of like to read about the, the hero failing because it makes <laughs> us feel like, see, they weren't that much better than me anyways, mm -hmm. or I, I don't know, whatever that yeah. is. And, and, and for anybody, we all go through the issue of kind of feeling like maybe we've lost significance or haven't achieved what we wanted. Um, and, but to process that, it's hard for anybody to process, to process that without all the tools because you've got a brain injury on top of it. Mm -hmm. that, that's where I think we have a real issue because they don't have all the mental tools in place to deal with yeah. all that that they're dealing with, all those issues that they say any, any normal human would have trouble dealing mm -hmm. with that. Uh, yeah. We're going to take another break. We're going to come back um, in just a minute. I'm talking with uh, um, Wes Chandler, uh, former NFL and president of WCTE, and Jennifer Gurgis. She is a behavioral therapist who partners with uh, WCTE in helping people dealing with traumatic brain injury and CTE. Uh, we'll be right back after this. This is Building Solid Foundations. I'm your host, Steve Madley. FireUp Connect is the most innovative business networking group, supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections, hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community-driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. FireUp Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 951- 551-1350 and ask for Kim. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951-551-1350 and ask for Kim. Welcome back to Building Solo Foundations Radio. I'm your host, Steve Matley. We are in the studio today with Dr. Jennifer Gerges and Wes Chandler, president and founder of WCTE. Uh, to get more information from either of our guests today, you can go to wcteinc.org, wcteinc.org, and learn about uh, CTE and traumatic brain injury and what Wes Chandler and his organization are doing to help people dealing with that. And to get more information from what Dr. Jennifer is doing, you can go to serenehealth.com, S-E-R-E-N-E, health.com, serenehealth.com, and learn more about the behavioral side. Uh, she is a behavioral therapist um, with a lot of credentials behind her. I didn't go through her entire bio because it was honestly um, 
pretty deep. She's got a lot of credentials from fantastic institutions, publications, and she's been doing this a long time. And I, and I understand why um, Wes has been partnering with her, helping these people. Um, so th I, we talked um, in the last couple segments about some of the issues, what leads to it, and those things. What are the, um, what are the steps we take to um, overcome it? What are the, what are, how do we start helping people recover? Well, like we said, taking the first step, right? Coming and talking to a professional and acknowledging, right? Because even in therapy, showing up is the first step, but then it's acknowledging what it is that you're doing. What are the changes that are taking place? How are you affecting loved ones? You know, taking some sense of ownership. And now, is, is a person that's dealing with this able to do that cognitively? Well, you're supposed to work up to that. Okay. It may, it may okay. not come up in one or two visits. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I think most people who theoretically have f perfectly functioning brains mm -hmm. have a hard time with a good self-evaluation and mm -hmm. coming up with personal accountability. So yeah. if you're dealing with cognitive issues, I would think that it'd be even more difficult to yeah. get to that point. And that would mm -hmm. be more in the family, like the couples. So okay. from my experience, we would normally start with individual for that reason. Okay. Kind of going back to your point, because you need that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so you're held accountable with just the one-on-one -on -one that professional. So there's no shame behind it. There's right. no stigma behind it. You, you're, you know, as, as a therapist myself, I was always very kind of nitty gritty, down to earth, you know, keeping it real. <laughs> that was my approach that really worked working with, you know, pretty much any patient that came because they're in a vulnerable state. They need That's the right. help. You don't want to come in this like entitled, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you what to do. It's like, I'm here trying to understand what it is that you're going through as best as I can as a professional right. and giving you the tools so that you can take baby steps, right? And, and so this is not a quick fix. No, it's because not. <laughs> to get to what's really what's really at the root of someone, you have to have them be honest and transparent mm -hmm. with you, which doesn't happen in a short visit. No. People have to know you, like you, and trust you before they open mm -hmm. up. Building rapport. That's, That's right. the first thing the with the therapy. Yeah, mm -hmm. having that connection, meeting the right therapist. Maybe the first one's not going to be the right one for you. It's not may not be the right fit, which is okay, you know. But being an advocate for yourself when you're seeking out treatment would be my advice to everyone out there because maybe that clinician that's out there is trying an approach that may not fit your needs. Um, if someone's been doing this for a long time, we know that it's not a cookie cutter. <laughs> you know, we try to see and hear what, what's presenting, you know, in our couch, so to speak, you know, who's right. sitting in front yeah. of us. Uh, who's on that screen now that's telehealth, right? You know, who's talking to me? And what would be a modality and what kind of treatment that I can put into practice to help? And sometimes it just means having conversations, real conversations for weeks and weeks and weeks to just build that trust and rapport so that when you start getting the trust, they'll, they'll be listening right to you and they'll be more open and receptive to the feedback you're going to give them because you're not going to give that to them on the first, the second, or the third visit most That's likely, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, trusting another human takes time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, okay. That's a process, yeah. <laughs> in other words. Yeah, because I don't want to hear the negative. <laughs> right. Well, and as I say, most of us mm -hmm. don't, don't like to be critiqued. We don't sure. like to be told that we're the problem, mm -hmm. uh, especially in a relationship. We always know it's the other person's problem, mm -hmm. that they Absolutely. would just be this if they would just do that, if they yeah. would just stop saying these things. Mm -hmm. And and we are completely blind to what we do. Yeah, because if we start that in the first visit, that's not going to go anywhere. People are going to storm out. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah, like, yeah. well, you're the problem. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, that's the, right. that's not the kind of, even though we may be thinking <laughs> in our head as a professional, because you know kind of what the, you start already putting the puzzle pieces together. Help them get there yeah. on their own mm -hmm. to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, because if we, if we get there on our own, then we buy into it. Exactly. But we wouldn't admit it to mm -hmm. anybody else. But if there's a trusted <laughs> person in there, that's mm -hmm. right. We, you know, that becomes. And, the, and, that, and that's you know. a trick. It's being also like almost like the therapist to be able to finesse the kind of the treatment and the way that the therapy leads that person <laughs> to that point of saying, oh, yeah, you know, having that insight on their own, because you're not just going to do a laundry list of things because it doesn't work very easily to just tell someone what to do. And then so. that ties into some of what we talked about the in the hand. previous yeah. uh, conversation, Wes, maybe what they need is an EEG or something like that to diagnose physically yeah. what mm -hmm. could be and yeah. exactly causing the problems. And, and the more and more players you have that that's an advocate with them to get it done, the more comfortable they become. Mm -hmm. And I, I think if, if you tell them, you know, your behavior is the problem, that's different than 
there's a physical reason mm -hmm. why your behavior is a problem. And, yeah. and all of a sudden it's like, it's not completely my fault. Mm -hmm. It's not just because I'm, I'm an idiot, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's or, or just a, a bad person. Yeah. That's right. It's because Fear. there's physically something not working right. Yeah, my brain let's, is Let's show you this map. Perfect. Let's show you what this map looks like and let's show you how your brain is supposed to function mm -hmm. versus where it is and where the neurons are today. Mm -hmm. right. right, right, and it's always good to, I think it's good for people to understand, they're, they're more receptive to it when they understand. Um, there, there, is a, there is a component of this that is a physical element mm -hmm. that was beyond my control. But yes. right, that, 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 that stigma you were talking mm -hmm. about, right. because when there is a physical element and you see the brain and you see the scan, like, oh, okay. It's what we call that medical model, right? The medical model is kind of the direction even mental health is going because people are gonna be more receptive, more open to seeing, oh, okay, that makes sense. You mm -hmm. know, it's not like, oh, you're weak or you're vulnerable. <laughs> you know, it, it takes away that aspect and it removes that stigma and the taboo of wanting to seek help. And I think that's why Pure TMS <laughs> has been so successful in the fact that people see the, the brain map and they're like, oh, okay, I can see like, you know, how it's functioning. And then maybe after 10, 20 visits, you know, the sessions yeah. that they have, they start seeing an improvement because they have those EEGs every week right. and they can gradually start seeing how it's changing, you know. So I think it works really well. And, and then for their family, the mm -hmm. spouses, children, if they're aware of this, then mm -hmm. they understand um, it's not personal. Mm -hmm. That, mm -hmm. that is a, it's a person dealing with a problem and sometimes it manifests itself in an ugly way, but it's not because you're just being mean. It's That's not correct. just because mm -hmm. they hate you. It's mm -hmm. because there are things that they can't always control yeah. and they're working. They're, they're doing what they need to to improve. Yeah. I think that goes that, a long way to help I was literally going to say it goes a long way for families because if a spouse knows that their loved one needs the help and they're willing to put the work and they're out there getting the help, they're there you know, by their them side, like I'm here to support you, right? I love you, and you know, I want to make this work. I want to be there yeah. to help you. Yeah. And it takes the reactiveness away too. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. you're not just triggered because every time they say something, they're mean. You know, okay, <laughs> that's not really you talking. Yeah. That, that's, that's that's yeah. correct. They can yeah. separate that and have a disconnect. Yeah. That's like in January when we had the dinner, uh, January 29th, we invited uh, a certain uh, number of athletes, former athletes but we also invited the spouse. So the presentations were geared towards the spouse of understanding the educational part okay. so that they could understand what this is all about and what's occurring and also enlightening the player that there's also help for the problems that you're facing. Mm -hmm. So together we were addressing both. Right. Right. And that's because the, the person dealing with it needs to have the support at home. Mm -hmm. Uh, not, you know, a, a therapist is good, but they need the support at home because oh, that's the 24-7 part oh, of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the person who's, who's, who is the support needs to understand what's going on so mm -hmm. they can be supportive and not, and avoid the reactiveness. Yeah. It's what yeah. we call psychoeducation, you know, right. that comes even if they, they're not part of, like, the family system. Sometimes we may just have a visit just with the loved one to educate them as to what their significant other is going through because mm -hmm. they just don't understand it. And once they do, they're like, they're more, you know, empathetic, right. you know, and can relate as much as they can to what their loved one is going through. And, you know, they can separate and say, okay, this is not about me right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is about yeah. my, my significant other really struggling and I'm going to do the best I can to be there to support them. Right, and, and, and that, as you mentioned, Wes, earlier, sometimes in these cases, the, the spouse or partner just wants to bail out. And yeah. I didn't sign up for this mess. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the worst thing you can do to the person suffering from it because they're already dealing with everything else. And, and that's deeper. one more notch to prove to them yeah. that they're a loser, yeah. they got nothing to live yeah. for or whatever. That's right. yeah. But now they're abandoned, right? Yeah. And they're left alone, and it's really sad. Yeah, and, and then yeah. the one person that's supposed to love me and trust me more than anybody in the world thinks I'm not worthy of mm -hmm. dealing with. And we've, we've, we've seen, you know, incident of such um, and it's you know it's, it's not the greatest thing in the world to see but for the most part I think that the partnership is is outstanding and I think it's it's worth its weight in gold all the way around more importantly when you have that support system at home for them to have a greater understanding uh, even with the kids um, that dad needs help and we have someone that we can turn to even on their own 
when they are struggling and I'm trying to do this every day, how about me? Where's my support base? Well, yeah, the need, support needs support yeah, too. Support mm-hmm. needs That's right. Support too. That's what we call caregiver fatigue. It builds up really, right. really quickly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, when yeah. you're giving, 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 um, at some point you have to stop and have Self-care. something <laughs> put into you too. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bank account. You can't. Keep, we can't keep withdrawing. <laughs> There's got to be some deposits. Right? Going right. on empty. That's right. <laughs> you need to fill that. Got to be some inputs, or there can't be any outputs. Mm-hmm. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. So we're gonna take another short break. Uh, we come back. We'll wrap this up. Uh, we got one more segment here, and we're gonna we're gonna address um, how how can you identify or know if the person you're with is dealing with this or if you're dealing with this. Mm-hmm. What, are, what are some of the signs and, and what should you do first? Uh, again, our, doc, our guest is Dr. Jennifer Gerges, a um, behavioral therapist, and Wes Chandler, founder and president of WCTE. And we'll be right back after this short break on Building Solid Foundations Radio. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. Fire Up Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Estate. Men of Real Estate Radio Show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically, go to the radio station KCAARadio.com. You can find us on your dial at 102.3 FM, 1050 AM, as well as 106.5 FM. For building Solid Foundations Radio. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 951- Five five one one three five zero, and ask for Kim. Again, that's kcaa producer at gmail.com or nine five one five five one one three five zero, and ask for Kim. Welcome back to Billy Solid Foundations Radio. I'm your host, Steve Matley. Um, we are wrapping up our conversation with Dr. Jennifer Gerges and with Wes Chandler. And we've been talking about uh, mental health, traumatic brain injury, CTE, uh, behavioral issues that come out of that, and how that affects relationships and how that affects quality of life. Uh, so uh, in kind of wrapping this up, I want to make this more personal for the listeners that are out there. Um, how, how can they know if if traumatic brain injury, CTE, something similar to that, is potentially the problem that they're dealing with, how would they know? Well, specifically what it ties to us would be the mental health component, right? That just little symptoms, little changes that, what we were just saying, the adjustment. Um, I know for Wes, it was a physical, you know, like literally he couldn't sign his right, His hand, hand wasn't you know, working like, anymore, Yeah, there's right. like an actual connection with the brain um, and that would be scary it is it is terrifying i would imagine being in that place where there's like the physical part but there's also the behavioral issues that that come as a result that may not seem very significant but just not being able to sleep at night having insomnia issues is it's a big one Um, okay so because we're told if you have insomnia it's probably because you spent too much time on a screen before bed (laughs) you just need to relax (laughs) you need to meditate whatever and but there it could be an issue of a brain injury Mm -hmm. brain injury um just the not the sleeplessness right or even the early awakening um maybe you go to sleep and you sleep for two three hours but you wake up kind of startled maybe you're having nightmares um you're reliving 
um, just certain changes that are taking place or just feeling really down um, and just not understanding why you're not motivated, you know, to get off the couch. You know, maybe your family really wants to get active or wants to do things, but you're like, mm, no, I'm not really feeling the urge of really doing much of anything. So a lot of the signs of depression. Yeah. Be, you know, okay. Yeah, because it ties in right together. So you mm -hmm. will have the signs of depression because it, it's not just a standalone by itself to have the traumatic brain injury. You're going to start noticing the depressive symptoms that come along with it. And with trauma, with PTSD, there's a lot of the same symptoms, you know, with okay. depression. Um, sometimes we, uh, when we're diagnosing our patients, it's not just one simple diagnosis. It may be two or three diagnoses that, right. that we're giving them uh, because they have heightened anxiety, you know, like a heightened startle response. Mm -hmm. um, they're just very like, you know, kind of on edge, just very jumpy. Uh, and they're just not feeling comfortable in their own skin. You know, mm -hmm. that's the best way I can describe it. You know, because I've heard it so many times, patients tell me that. I'm just like, on edge constantly, 24-7. Mm -hmm. And hence why I can't sleep, why I can't ha carry conversations with, with family, with friends. I just don't feel like myself. You know, I feel like I'm just kind of like standing there um, physically, but mentally I'm not there. I'm kind of spacing out, zoning out. Um, so a lot of that, you, you'll start noticing those changes and, and sadly people wait, you know, you know, until it gets to a point where they're just completely, you know, lethargic and just not being able to do much of anything. And, and most of us would just say, okay, well, they're just being lazy. They're just doing whatever, right? Yeah. People and don't recognize it as that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and that's the same thing, um, not to get off that bean path, but we also, uh, had these players go through heart health scan. And sometimes they think fatigue is just because they're getting a little bit older or tired. Fatigue right. mm -hmm. could be signs of a stroke or a heart attack. Mm -hmm, that's true. To, okay, to so your point, circulatory To your issues. point, mm -hmm. right? So when you look at uh, memory loss, depression, sporadic behavior, those characteristics line up with, you know, th these epidemics that stem from CTE and TBI. Okay. Yeah, because it's going to affect so many aspects of the individual, mm -hmm. right? The mental health is one part, but then you're dealing with like heart health right. and, you know, brain health and just neurologically, there's going to be some issues too. So, yeah. so those symptoms you listed, we, those are common to a lot of different diagnoses. Yeah. A lot right. of diagnoses. Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling that most of us aren't thinking one of those could be traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. or CTE. Like most of us wouldn't True. think that. Especially you know, if we didn't play, if we weren't in a field of a professional yeah. athlete, but we could have been in a car accident. Mm -hmm. We could have, we could have um, hit our head on something at mm -hmm. some point. Yeah. And, and those things can be seem subtle, yeah. but they can have long-term damage. I mean, I think may not because it builds be up, mind. I think that's the right. scary part because you may be recovering, you're going through all your doctor's visits, right, for the physical aspect of the head trauma. Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of given the, hey, the green light, go back to your life. Right. And then all of a sudden there's the mental health component that creeps in and right. then people are like, what, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do now? You right. know, because the, you know, the primary care physician, if they didn't pick up on those signs, they may not do yeah. the appropriate referral. Like, hey, you may be in need to talk to a therapist. <laughs> so as you're, as you're working through these things, if you're dealing with any of these symptoms, this is one possibility that it could be this. Don't rule it out. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you, you know, right. check everything, and but don't exclude having this researched, even if that means going through some tests, mm -hmm. whatever you have to do, vis you know, talking to therapists and uh, getting to the bottom of it to make sure that, that you are, in fact, treating the right thing. Yeah. There could be a physical component to it. Yeah. True, but we also found that the consistency of a combination of those things, like sporadic behavior, aggressive behavior, mm -hmm. depression, memory loss, line up. Yeah. Okay. So that multiple symptoms mm -hmm. say line that up. That line mm -hmm. up. Yeah. That, that, Im that impulsive is pretty high up there. Yeah. Hence yeah. the behavioral changes that you do yeah. witness. Okay. So so if you're out there listening and those are things that, that seem to raise a flag for you, mm -hmm. like that makes sense, mm -hmm. check it out. Now, if you want a starting point, you can go to serenehealth.com. Uh, S-E-R-E-N-E health.com, serenehealth.com, all one word, no spaces. And then you could also check out wcteinc.org, wcteinc.org. That is um, West Chandler's WCTE organization. Um, most important thing to do is don't rule anything out. Um, do, you know, you don't want to self-diagnose, but you also don't want to rule things out. So mm -hmm. go get things checked 
And um, you can do some research on your own and inform yourself. And if it looks like you've got any of these signs yourself or someone that you're with, someone that's close to you, um, check it out. It doesn't cost you anything to check the websites. And, and, and usually it's not um, too time or cost intensive to get the initial step, get some initial information mm -hmm. and find mm -hmm. out what's going on, um, get to the bottom of it. So I wanna thank um, my guest today, Dr. Jennifer Gurgis. Um, the, uh, she is a marriage and family therapist and a behavioral therapist. And Wes Chandler, uh, NFL uh, retired and founder and president of WCTE. And I just want to say to both my guests, I really appreciate the work you're doing out there and making a difference in lives. This is something that people don't like to talk about. Um, we kind of don't want to admit that that's around us. We don't know how to deal with someone that's maybe dealing with it. And you're providing solutions and ways to help people dealing with it and improve their lives mm -hmm. and get, get their lives back on track. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a very important calling. This is Building Solid Foundations Radio. Check us out every week. We are live on Thursdays and Sundays at 3 p.m. on KCAA. Catch us on the Building Solid Foundations channel on Roku, Fire TV, or Android. And we will see you next week. Until then, go do something different this week. <laughs>